Thank you, Father. Good morning, good morning, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Give a little time for individuals to join. Welcome Facebook. Good morning, Breakers family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Minister Mashiro. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I apologize for my tardiness this morning. We're running a little bit behind. Hallelujah. Sister Mashiro, good morning. So good to see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, Demetrius. Good to see you, ma'am. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Well, without further delay, let us go ahead and, and jump in with a word of prayer. Good morning. Good morning, Apostle Sandra. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, truly, your word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. Now the, the author asks, where can a young man cleanse his way by, by taking keen, by taking heed, O oh God, to your word, O oh God. And Father, today we take word, heed to your word, O oh God. Father, as we rise, O oh God, we don't want to make a step without you, O oh God. As we, as we get our day started, O oh God. Father, we don't want to move without you, God. So Father, we seek you, O oh God, for directions, O oh God. Father, we come to you, O oh God. Father, early in the morning, O oh God, for directions, O oh God. Father, we take this time, O oh God, and we lift up our leaders in, in Aaron, Mr. Rosanna. God, we speak strength over their, their life, O oh God. We speak increased capacity, O oh God. We speak perseverance over their lives, O oh God. Father, have your way, O oh God. Father, do mighty things, O oh God. Do extraordinary miracles in their lives, O oh God. Hallelujah, Father. Father, we bless you. Blow their minds, O oh God. And Father, for all the people of God who are listening, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Father, for the ability, O oh God, just to be called by your name. It's such a privilege and an honor to be called Christians. Hallelujah. Father, such a privilege, O oh God, to be called by your name. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Even as I was praying, I was just, just considering how individuals' names get changed. Usually in, in our culture, it's it's through marriage, you know. So, so my wife's last name changed from, from Richards to Francis, you know, when she got married. But, you know, so our last names, you know, we, we get the, the seal or the, the label of Christ when we get our new birth. We become we become Christians. Hallelujah. And we bear the title of, of Christ. Hallelujah. We we carry his his DNA. We we become his, and you know he we identify with him, and we get all the benefits. Hallelujah! We get all the benefits of bearing the name of Jesus. Amen. So good morning. I want to take some time and jump into the word, and but before we do that, just want to give honor to to our pastor, you know Aramis, and you know First Lady Lady Rosanna Hines. You know bless them for you know for all they do. You know we we definitely we speak on on their behalf and we thank God for for the opportunity to share amen today we're going to talk about the body so we're going to talk about the body amen so we, we've been talking about you know health and wellness health and wellness if you look in the description I call it today Discip discipline discipline in my body I discipline my body we're going to go from first Corinthians chapter 9 first Corinthians chapter 9 we're going to read 24 and 27 hallelujah and I'm going to read out of the King James Version first. And then I'll read the New Living Translation. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Let's read. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the price. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. No, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the ear. But I keep under my body. That's a powerful statement right there. I keep under my body. You know, I, I put my own body into 
subjection. Whenever my body wants to rise up, I literally, it's a term that literally means to, <clears throat> excuse me, to suppress or to, to keep down when it wants to act crazy. Some people talk about, you know, lack of, you know, lack of self-control or they can't stop cussing or they, they can't, it's just the way they are. They can't stop, you know, they, they blow up and they have these, you know, temper tantrums and, and outbursts and you know, all those things. And Paul said, there's some things that are inside of me, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hallelujah. So we just want to pause on that point for a little bit. It's, a, it's about an eternal life. A lot of things that we do in this life, we do it for you know, some type of temporary gain. Um, you know, we, we, we do it for, um, it, you know, in, it's, it's June now, you know, so welcome to June, everyone. You know, it's the summer. There's, there's a lot of weddings and a lot of events and some people will diet and they'll exercise for an event. You know, some people want to look good for their, their 20th, their 30th, 40th, you know, high school reunion or what have you. And so they'll exercise for a particular goal. It's not so much a, a lifestyle change that they're looking for, but they're looking to meet a date and they're looking to meet a goal on that date and they'll discipline themselves only for, for time. But here the apostle Paul is, is exhorting and he's, he's saying to the Corinthians, after I do all this stuff, at the end, I'm not just looking for a prize in this life. I'm ultimately, good morning, Keisha, God bless you. I'm ultimately looking for a prize that is eternal. I'm looking for a prize that's incorruptible. The, the trophies on the wall, they'll they'll look nice. People come by, they'll they'll admire them. But ultimately, I'm looking for a prize. And people don't necessarily talk about, you know, heaven or hell that much anymore. But in the end, there's, there's a place that we're going after this life. And we have to prepare ourselves for what is to come. You know, it's like an individual who is retired. You know, my, my daughter asked me yesterday, you know, she said, Dad, if you, you know, if you weren't doing what you were doing, no, you know, what would you, what would you do for, for a career? You know, and I said, you know, you know, she said, you can't, I think she said, you can't say, you know, soccer or, or doctor or what have you. And I told her, I would, I would still want to play soccer. But if you look at most athletes, you know, by their late 30s, maybe some push it into early 40s, it's the end of the career by the late 30s or, in, or early into their 40s, some sooner, you know, it's the end of their career. So if I was going to be a, you know, a professional athlete, a professional soccer player, I would, I would need to, to have something to fall, fall back on after that, right? You know, it, my whole life wouldn't be, you know, all about being a professional athlete. And I, I told you, you know, I'd I would love to be a, you know, a teacher because of the, the, the impact that, you know, that a teacher has, not just in the subject matter, that a teacher teaches, but also in, you know, in, in being a role model, being a, a positive influence in, in the life of young people. Amen. And so it's not just what you can do in the moment. Amen. You got to prepare ourselves. Our, the Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that, that lives in us. And, you know, Minister Pierre, I believe in, in a couple of weeks ago, you know, he did an excellent job in terms of breaking down the different definitions for you know, for the world, you know, we talk about, you know, when we talk about health and wellness, we talk about it from a, a comprehensive standpoint. We talk about health and wellness really from, you know, mind, you know, with soul, spirit, and body. And we know this, the soul to have the, the mind, the will, and the emotion. So we, 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 we deal with all of those things. And he did an excellent job just breaking down, you know, the difference, talking about the, the word of God, how it can you know, pierce through and it can separate between the soul and the spirit. Amen. And so our body, if our bodies are the temple of God, the question that I, I pose to, to each individual, which is a question that I pose to myself, you know, what type of temple do you want for the Holy Ghost? You know, what type of temple do you want for the Holy Ghost? You know, what, how, how do you want him to, to live? Spirit of the living God, God himself taking residence on the inside of us. How, how, what type of preparations would we make? We know when we have guests coming over, we clean and we sweep and you know, we do all these things, right? 
how do we want to host and not and not just having holy spirit as as a guest how do we want him to to abide if he lives with us because we know there's a different type of cleaning we do for those who visit than the ones that we do for the ones that we live with amen and so if, if holy spirit literally resides takes up residence on the inside of us he walks with us he talks with us he's with us all the time what do you want him to to experience all the time when he's with us not just on sunday morning what type of temple what type of house do we want holy spirit to reside to reside in amen so i'm going to flip over and i'm going to read out of the new living translation again just for the sake of clarity it says don't you realize that in a race everyone runs but only one person gets the prize so run to win <laughs> hallelujah all athletes are disciplined in their training all athletes are disciplined in their training they do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for an eternal prize hallelujah so i run with purpose in every step i am not shadow box boxing i'm not just beating against the ear i'm not just haphazardly i feel like doing it today and i don't feel like doing it tomorrow it's like i'm not just all over the place there's there's no you know there's you know, I, I'm not just living vicariously and, and doing whatever I, I feel like doing. I, I am strategic in what I do. Amen. I discipline my body like an athlete training to do it, to do what it should. <laughs> Hallelujah. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're talking about a preparation ultimately for, for eternity. We're talking about not something to, to impress others. Paul's exhortation here wasn't, you know, I need to do this so I can be the best deacon in the church or, you know, I can really have the, the best body or the, the best face or any of those things. It was like, you know, at the end of the day, I realized after all this stuff that I do, telling people this and telling people that, at the end of the day, I have to give an account. And I can't help usher people into the kingdom of God and me myself not have access into the kingdom of God. Ultimately, it's about eternity. And what we do here on this earth, it does, it does matter and it does have an impact for eternity. So Paul talks about discipline. And I was, I was, I was pondering and, and considering you know, just, and not everybody's life, so I don't want to assume what everybody does, but if you consider most of our schedules, especially in, in, in Metro Detroit area, where, you know, public transportation isn't, isn't the greatest, right? So you think you go to sleep for however long you sleep, you're laying flat, you know, so pretty sedentary, not doing any activity, you're laying down when you sleep. You wake up, you might have some breakfast or jump on the devotional call and you get in your car and you go to work, you go to school or whatever it is that you do. And depends on your, your type of work, you might sit at a desk or if you're in school, you might sit at a desk most of the day, right? And so you're you're sitting down and then your day, your work is done and you, you get up, you sit back in your car and you drive home and you say it's been a long day. And you're tired so you sit and you might read or you might watch tv or you know have something to eat and before you know it time has passed it's time to go back to bed think about that day and i'm not saying this is everybody's day but for a lot of people this it it, it flows something like this how much physical activity was was involved in that and so you know my wife and i were talking and we we're like you know what in with the, the lifestyles that we live, exercises, it's not even something. Good morning, Aramis. God bless you, sir. Thank God for safe journey. It exercise, it's not even just an option. It's not even like a, a cute thing that we do or a, you know something that we can just add to a schedule. Knowing that we don't really walk that much, knowing that the way society is is set up, we're not really doing much. And you go to 
to Kroger or Meyer and you know muscles that we normally use. We don't even use them anymore, right? In times past, you'd have to grab a door and open it up. You go to the grocery store, and magically the door the, the doors part. You know they part for you, and you and you just walk in, right? So even muscles that we would use, we're not even in a day to day basis using those muscles. We were talking to to my family yesterday, and you know I was challenging them, challenging them with the the outdoors, and I said, you know, no matter what the temperature is outside, America lives between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Just in the wind, you have it somewhere between 62 and 72 degrees. And we don't, our bodies don't even know how to handle, you know, the, the extreme heat, so the, the cold, cold, you know, because it's everything is temperature, you know, you know, climate control, temperature regulation. And, we, you know, we don't push our bodies to any limits. We don't exert, you know, any energy. And so things that we do when it comes to discipline for a body, it's not even optional if this is the type of life, you know, that we live. You know, it's not even optional. It's something that we got to build in. It's not like, you know, we can say, you know what, you know, I work construction and God bless all the construction workers, all the farmers and those who are working, you know, physical job because they really do, you know, they get, you know, exercise. You know, they really, you know, put in effort and put in labor. But for the, the rest of us who are not working those physical, those physical jobs and carrying blocks and, you know, lifting wood and, and all of that exercises, it's not an option, you know, for our body. You know, it's something essentially, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, what we do know is a function of our culture. If you look at a map of the United States, you know, like cities that are broken down by, by obesity, for example. And you look maybe at in the northeast, you'll see the northeast on the map. And you can Google it after this or, you know, when you get a time, just type, you know, U.S. map, you know, by BMI or by obesity or something like that. If you look at the states that has the highest, you know, BMI, the people who are the heaviest, it's usually the Midwestern states, you know, like Michigan, Ohio and, you know, and the like um, and, and the southern states. And if you look at the, the, the coastal states, you know, Northeast states, Boston, you know, um, city, I'm sorry, cities like, you know, Boston, New York City, example, for example, if you think about what's happening in these cities, people are hustling and bustling. There's a lot of good public transit. People are rushing to catch the next subway or to catch the next bus. You know, people are walking, you know, everywhere. And just by way of, of their society, they 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 manage to keep to keep in shape but where things are set up here you know it, the public transit and you know pedestrian traffic it, it is not like where it is some places you know especially rural areas you know it there's there's no public there's no public transit you know people you don't walk anywhere you know you, you get in your car you go to a spot you get what you need you get back in your car and you go and so for the people of God, if, if our body is truly the temple of God, we have to discipline ourselves. We have to literally not say, well, oh yeah, it's, it's Memorial Day, it's a holiday, I'm going to take a day off. It literally has to be something that we're in our schedule. Because ultimately what, what happens is we have a call of God in our lives. We have a purpose of God in our lives. And our bodies don't allow us to fulfill the purpose, the energy and the strength that we have. It's like... <laughs> Praise and worship even becomes hard because, you know, you can't lift your hands for too long. You can't jump. You can't shout. I mean, you can't sometimes even speak without getting short, short of breath. And I'm not talking about because of asthma and, you know, and, 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 and those things. But I'm just talking about deconditioning where we're not, you know, some of us, sometimes the most exercise we get is praise and worship on a Sunday. You know, we these are things that we have to put into our schedules. It, just to maintain a healthy weight. We're not even talking to lose weight. You know, what you need is, is 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. You know, what I mean by moderate intensity exercise, you know, where it's not just walking and talking or what have you. You know, it's not just walking and, and talking. It It's, you know, brisk. You know, I tell people if, if moderate intensity exercise is where you increase your heart rate and you break a sweat. 
You know, if you're exercising, it's not at a pace where you're, you're breaking a sweat and you're increasing your heart rate. It's not moderate intensity exercise. And so as I challenge myself, I challenge you as well. Let us take care of these temples that we have that house the spirit of the living God. We're not just doing it, you know, for prom. We're not just doing it, you know, for, you know, for the wedding that, that's coming up. We're not just doing it, you know, for, for the family reunion because we want to impress the people we haven't seen in a long time. And 50 minutes, you know, 150 minutes. So if you think about, you know, five days out the week, let's say Monday to Friday, you know, you exercise for 30 minutes each time. That's 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise. And I'm not even talking about going to the gym. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about buying expensive equipment. One of the things that my wife and I, we, we've done for years and in, 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 in transparency, we're not as disciplined in doing it now. And what we do, we started doing what's called the 20-minute um, living room workout. And, you know, in the Breaker family page later on, I'll, I'll post it, the 20-minute living room workout. And it doesn't need any any special equipment. You know, it's just, you know, sit-ups, push-ups, jumping jacks, um, you know, high knees, squats, um, just things that you can do that you don't need to, to pay a gym membership for, but you just intentionally add it to your day. And what's so amazing about the 20 minute living room workout, even on your busiest day, because it's 20 minutes, you can watch the evening news and do it. And you can literally put the news on and catch up on the news of the day. And, and you can do some sit-ups and push-ups and, you know, recently modified that to include things that are that are less, you know, high impact that, you know, different individuals at different energy levels or, or different capability levels that, that they can actually do. But people of God, we're we are striving for an eternal prize, not a prize that will pass away. We're not competing against one another, you know, like athletes are competing. We're, you know, we're, we're not trying to have so much, you know, the best six pack or, or what have you. And ultimately, that's not what it is. Ultimately, we're trying to be in the best physical shape that will honor God. We, we're trying to make a physical house for spiritual God who inhabits our temple. And we say, we don't want God to just come and just visit, right? We say, God, we, like like the Shunammite woman, you know, like that we want, we want to make a permanent, you know, habitation for you. We want to make a place where, you know, you feel welcome. Like every time you come, God, this is your spot. You know, we don't have to pull out <laughs> the sofa for you. We don't have to, you know, you know, make the couch into, into a sleeping area. You know where your neck is all bent but god we want you to be comfortable anybody want the holy spirit you know want holy spirit to be comfortable when they stay you know god i, I want you to feel like like you're at home i don't want you to feel like you're you're an inconvenience when you know when you you come and you visit me when you when you when you stay with me when we when we fellowship i don't want it to feel like a like an inconvenience i don't want it to seem like i you know i pull out the the plastic chairs out of the out of the garage and you know and have you sitting on the plastic chair you know i want a place where you can stay i know we're talking about the body but it ultimately it is it is all spiritual you know because god literally he he framed us with his hands and he blew his breath into into our body so we literally house god <laughs> if you were to house the president the prime minister any dignitary you know, what adjustments would we make? Just consider it. What adjustments would we make? The things that we said we can't actually do. The things that we don't have time to, to fit in. You know, what would we do? You know, to house, you know, some, you know, you think of the, the dignitary that, that you would like to house. What what, what would you make? What adjustments would you make, you know, to your, your place of dwelling? You know, and consider every day housing Holy Spirit, the one that hangs that hangs the stars in the sky the ones that give breath to breath itself you know the one that gives meaning to everything people of god we are competing not against flesh and blood but we are we are competing for an eternal eternal prize and and here you know it talks about only one can win you know paul says only one can win the prize and we talk about naturally they can only be one olympic champion but in the spirit is it's not so you know we can all we can all win you know, we can all have that incorruptible prize. It's, it's not exclusive. You know, I'm not talking about things that that's unattainable that you can't you can't reach. I'm not even even when we talk about exercise. I'm definitely not talking about training for 
for the Olympics. I'm not even talking about training for, for a marathon, right? I'm just talking about moderate intensity exercise. I'm not even talking about exercise for weight loss, which is more than 150 minutes, you know, which is more than moderate intensity. You know, I'm not talking about tra training for, you know, for some type of, you know, athletic competition, you know, the, the requirements would go up. I'm just talking floor level basics knowing the type of life you know that we live knowing mm -hmm. you know that we we drive everywhere knowing you know that that everything is is controlled for us knowing that things are climate control you know what do we do you know are we more comfortable being inside than outside does outside seems unnatural <laughs> does it seem unnatural just think about it you know because that's this is what i went into with my kids you know outside feel unnatural to them because they're so used to being indoors amen and so amen let, let us grow together i'm not saying this because i got it you know don't pack you know some people look at me like man kwame you're, you're slim or what have you and i told them you know slim skinny people have heart attacks so it, it's not you know some people body structures are are different I, I don't consider myself to be you know to be in in, in good health you know most likely was what, what I'm working with now is is the genetics of my mother and father you know both both slim people you know what you see on the outside doesn't even necessarily rep, you know represent you know a, a picture of health you know so let's you know let's do it you know I say I'll, I'll post a 20 minute living room workout you know within within the breaker page and I'll, I'll send some more information we you know it's a like it's a journey can we enjoy the journey it's not like we're not trying to get ready for a wedding. We're not trying to get ready for a prime. We, we're trying to change our lives. We're trying to live our lives to the glory of God so that ultimately we are not a castaway in the end. Ultimately, we can fulfill the purpose of God. When, we, when it's time to go walk the streets, we'll have energy to walk the streets. When it's time to pour out ourselves like a drink offering before God, we'll have energy to give him our best in worship. When it's time to, to travel and to go places and to do things, we'll have energy to do all those things to bless God. Amen bless you thank you for your time thank you for your attention look forward to seeing you this evening with apostle edwin Lindsay as we continue to dive in the word of god and, and honestly every every morning amen let us pray <laughs> Heavenly father your word is a lamp to our feet it's a light to our path we god we thank you the entrance of your word it brings light to god it it gives us direction oh god and father we're so grateful first of all to be called by your name to be christians oh god to have the seal and the mark of Christ himself, oh God, the, the anointed one, the Messiah. We, we are so grateful, oh God, that people look and they say, you, you must have been with him. God, we're so grateful, oh God. We can't state it enough, but we remember our our former life, oh God. We remember our our for, former state, oh God. When, when when you weren't our priority, oh God, we remember, oh God, when we, we lived vicariously, oh God, we did whatever it is that we felt like doing. But God, it, it is not so anymore we are on the authority of oh god and and we have authority as well god so father we bless you oh god we thank you oh god for for the new birth experience oh god. we thank you for life in the spirit we thank you for life in christ oh god father we thank you oh god that we no longer call the shots god we're happy that we don't call the shots so oh god we're happy that we can't go everywhere god we're happy that we can't eat everything we can't drink everything god we're happy that we can't smoke everything oh god we're happy to have a note in our lives oh god that somebody to say stop somebody to say don't do it oh god father we are grateful oh god because we remember when we did all those things and we we know the the effects on them oh god and father for any person oh god who who doesn't know you oh god any person who doesn't have a good master in their lives not someone who's brute and, and wicked and, and doesn't care for them, but a good, good master, good father. God, we bless you, oh God, for them, oh God. We pray for, for souls, oh God. Bring more souls into the kingdom. And God, prepare us, oh God, to handle them with care. God, we bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, people of God. Have a victorious day in the Lord. See you at 6 p.m. Amen.